Supposing you wake up in the morning, and it's a lovely morning. Let's take today, right here and now, here we are in this paradise of a place. And some of us have got to go to work on Monday. Is that a problem? For many people it is. It spoils the taste of what's going on now. When we wake up in bed on Monday morning and think of the various hurdles we've got to jump that day, uh, immediately we feel sad and bored and bothered. Whereas actually we're just lying in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so the Taoist trick says simply live now and there will be no problems that's the meaning of the Zen saying when you are hungry, eat when you are tired, sleep when you walk, walk when you sit, sit Rinzai the great Tang Dynasty master said, in the practice of Buddhism, there is no place for using effort. Sleep when you're tired, move your bowels, eat when you're hungry. That's all. The ignorant will laugh at me, but the wise will understand. And at the end of this morning's talk, I pointed out to you the immediate way. The way through now. When you know that this moment is the Tao and this moment is considered by itself without past and without future, eternal, neither coming into being nor going out of being, there, there is Nirvana. You don't, there is no such thing as a progression in time. The spring does not become the summer. There is first spring and then there is summer. So in the same way, you now do not become you later. This is T.S. Eliot's idea in uh, Four Quartets where he says that the person who has settled down in the train <laughs> to read the newspaper is not the same person who stepped onto the train from the platform. And therefore also you who sit here are not the same people who came in at the door. These states are separate, each in its own place. And the person sitting here and now is not the person who will die. We are all a, a constant flux. And the continuity of the person from past through present to future is as illusory in its own way as the upward movement of the red lines on a revolving barber pole. You know it goes round and round and round and, and the whole thing seems to be going up or going down whatever the case may be. But actually nothing is going up or down. So when you throw a pebble into the pond and you make a concentric rings of waves, there is an illusion that the water is flowing outwards. And no water is flowing outwards at all. Water is only going up and down. What appears to move outward is the wave, not the water. Our seeming to go along in a course of time it doesn't really happen. The Buddhists say, Suffering exists, but no one who suffers. Deeds exist, but no doers are found. A path there is, but no one who follows it. And nirvana is, but no one who attains it. So, in this way they look upon the continuity of life as the same sort of illusion that is produced when you take a cigarette and in the dark whirl it and the illusion of a circle is created whereas there is only the one point of fire. The argument then is so long as you're in the present there aren't any problems. Things just do what they do. 
It's just like that. A really virtuous person doesn't show his virtue. Well, there's a poem in Chinese which says, Entering the forest, he doesn't disturb a blade of grass. Entering the water, he doesn't make a ripple. He looks very ordinary, and so his virtue can't be detected. He doesn't stink of virtue. So now, when it comes to Taoism, this is a point of view that becomes explicit in Chinese history. It used to be said that Lao Tzu was originally thought to have been a contemporary of Confucius, who lived between 6 and 500 BC. But the general weight of scholarly opinion today is that the Lao Tzu book is uh, about 400. And the book is called the Tao Te Jing. And so Jing in Chinese means a classical book or scripture. Tao is usually translated the way, but I would prefer to call it the course, the course of nature. And de means virtue, but in the sense that we use the word virtue when we say the healing virtue of a plant. And water is very often used by Lao Tzu to give the idea of Tao, because water always takes the line of least resistance. Water is very soft, and yet one of the strongest things in the world. You can chop water with a sword, but leave no wound. So what everybody wants to know then is how to acquire that great naturalness. How do you do it? Wu Wei. Wei means to act, to strain, to strive, or to interfere. And so the Taoist manner of life is Wu Wei. Don't force it. Always go with the stream. You may need to use a rudder, but don't ever go against the stream. If you are swimming and you're caught in a very strong current, you'll be lost if you try to swim against it. You must swim with it and edge to the side. That's duh, you see, that's magical power. But it all comes about through not using effort, not straining at anything, never strained. 